It's about 4 o'clock uh, on the 15th of July, right here in the middle of the Charleston or Rastradero Transportation Corridor on the section that the city has been experimenting, experimenting with a lane reduction project. Uh, I'm currently standing on an island that has been added to facilitate people's walking across the street to get access to a small park over on the other side of the road. As you can see, there really isn't that much traffic going along, although people stopping for these people walking across doesn't help the start and stop problems that result in rear-end traffic accidents. I have no idea how many people a day use this crosswalk, but it's hard to believe that there aren't going to be increased accidents, rear-enders, on both sides of this road in the mornings anyway. It's a little after four. It's Friday afternoon. We're maybe 200 feet to the east of the Alta Mesa Cemetery. And that's uh, maybe 1,500 feet or so to the east of Gunn High School, which is pretty much the end of segment four of the Charleston Arastadero Transportation Corridor. As we looked at the traffic monitoring sign down near Lewis on East Charleston earlier today, we now want to look at this one, which is showing that people are speeding much more so than down on the segment one entrance into Palo Alto. Hopefully the sign shows up on this video. Uh, this road is far more capable of handling 35 miles an hour than 25 miles an hour and Frankly, as a resident and a motorist, it's almost a crime that Palo Alto has the right to set these speed limits as low as they are on these roads. It's a shame that somebody doesn't ultimately pass a law forcing Caltrans to come in or some other agency, maybe the Highway Patrol, and rethink roads that are arterials so that the uh, speed limits are more in line with other cities so that we don't have this massive complaint about speeding along this particular roadway. Most cars can accelerate fairly quickly, and so the idea that a car can go from zero to 35 or 40 in you know, a quarter of a block or half a block is long ago been a reality. So it's not hard for cars to get right up at the 35 mile an hour limit, which this, as I said, even with one lane, this road is uh, going in one direction, is more than capable, because when the city reduced the lane, number of lanes, they didn't reduce the lane size. I don't think they did. interesting to see what traffic flow through here would be if everyone were forced to use the 25 mile an hour limit for which that was set by Chief Zercher I think way back in 1948 long before South Palo Alto had come into existence and uh, when cars barely went above 55 Whatever the claims are about this downsizing project being a success, it certainly hasn't forced cars to drive at 25 miles an hour.
Another really frustrating part about Palo Alto is that there are probably a thousand stop signs in this town which are contraindicated by traffic engineers as traffic control devices. Many neighborhood associations and political parties have made their name by getting stop signs stuck into their neighborhoods so that it's virtually impossible to go more than a block or two before you have to stop if you happen to be driving in the neighborhoods. This is just adds to the massive frustration of trying to drive in this town.